Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to see how to convert this Word document into a LaTeX document. This one that you can see on my screen is going to be the Word document that we are going to convert into LaTeX. As you can see, we have a, a title, we have an author, we have headings, introduction, background, we have also some uh, type setting, so we have some bold text, uh, italic text, uh, and also we have some underlined text. We have math equations here, we have figures, we have also tables and the list and bullet list. We also have some references. So we are going to see how well Pandoc, that is the tool that we used last week to convert a LaTeX document into a Word document, performs when we want to do the opposite. So in this case, we want to convert this Word document into a LaTeX document. So the first thing that we need to do in order to convert this uh, Word document into a LaTeX document uh, is we have to install Pandoc. Pandoc is a free and open source tool that allows you to convert uh, documents from different formats. In uh, last week's video, which was about uh, a conversion from LaTeX to Word, I showed you how to install Pandoc. So if you don't have Pandoc already installed in your computer, I would highly encourage you to just check my previous video but it's pretty simple. You just have to open a browser and then you have to do a Google search. So we can say Pandoc and then we can do a search about Pandoc and then we can go in installing and then download the installer. You should be able to pick up already the operative system that you have and then you just click here, you install the installer and then you're ready to go. In order to check that you have Pandoc already installed on your computer, you can just use the terminal and that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to go to the downloads folder here and I'm going to open this project here with the VS Code. You don't have to do so, I'm just using VS Code because then inside the VS Code I can also compile the LaTeX document and see what we need to fix. However, if you want to, you can use a different LaTeX compiler or a different IDE. If, if you want, you can also use Notepad to change the LaTeX file, doesn't really matter. I think uh, VS Code or PyCharm are two great tools that allow us to compile LaTeX code into a PDF. So I think uh, they are great. Also, we have a terminal here at the bottom, which we are inside already the folder of our project. So we can run the pandoc command, we can compile the LaTeX document, and we can check that everything is fine. If you want to find out how to compile a LaTeX document inside VS Code, I will highly suggest you to just check my video on this topic. I have a video on YouTube, both for Mac and both for Windows. So check that video out if later on you want to find out how to compile a code inside the VS Code. So as I previously mentioned, the first thing that we need to do is to check that we have Pandoc installed on our computer. So we can do Pandoc-V. And we can see that I have the latest version of Pandoc because I have Pandoc 2.18. Of course, if you want to compile also your uh, LaTeX document, uh, you also have to install uh, MicText. And again, check my previous video if you want to find out how to do that. Uh, but basically, you need a LaTeX compiler because LaTeX is a compiled language, uh, therefore you need a compiler. And uh, you can just look for MicText. I will not go too much more in detail into that because today the scope of this video is only how to convert a Word document into a LaTeX document. So let's get started. So inside this um, inside this folder, we have the document dot docx, which is the document that I have opened here on my screen. So this is the document that we want to convert to LaTeX, and then we have the image. It's going to be very important that you keep all the images in the same folder. You can put them inside a subfolder, which is actually uh, what I normally do because I generally have a lot of images in my paper. So I would create another folder called figures, but you can keep them in the same, uh, like here, in the same uh, root directory. And then I have the readme file, which contains all the commands that we're going to use today. And uh, I will put all these commands down in the video description. So later on, you can just follow me. Uh, you can just follow along with me. And then uh, later on, you can just check down in the video description and you can get all the commands that I'm using in this video. So let's get started. We have to navigate in the same folder where our Word uh, file is. And then we have to write the following into the terminal. is pandoc. 
and then we have to say i but we can say document and then o which means output and we're going to call it body dot text this is going to be the latex file that is going to be automatically generated by pandoc and this will contain all the latex source code which will be necessary to actually compile our document so let's run this command here and we're going to get a new file here in the same directory which is called body.txt let's try to open this file here and let's see the first issue that arises when you use this command here we can close the terminal because it's no longer needed so the first issue that happens is that if you try to compile this document here you're going to get an error let's try to do it actually we are going to get an error because we don't have the document class uh, nor the begin document which are actually necessary to run a file actually if i even try to press here on the play button we don't uh, um, do uh, VS Code doesn't do anything because it's expecting that uh, our document start with a document class article for instance and a begin and an end document so that's completely missing so the, the first thing that we need to do is to create another file here which we're going to call it main.txt that's why i call this file here body.txt because here in main.txt we're going to put all the packages all the commands that we need in order to compile our latex document i'm just copying it here and i'm going to explain what i'm doing here so here we as usual in a latex document we have document class and then here we're specifying article of course you could have specified book if you want to we're importing here a lot of packages that are going to become very useful later on. So we have the graphics, the book tabs, tabular X, and wrap fig. These uh, are not all of them are necessary. The wrap fig, for instance, is not going to be necessary, but it's okay to have it there. Then we have the hyperref. So these are for the tables, actually. This is for the hyperreferences. Then uh, we have the link, then we have colors, and then we have multi row, which is also important uh, for the table. And this is also another package for a table. Then we have mat and then array. All these packages, unfortunately, are needed, but you don't have to worry about that. You can just copy uh, and paste my source code. Here is where we are importing the body.txt file that we just have created. So here we say begin document, and then we have input here, and we are getting all the content of the file as body. So for instance, you could have copied all the content of body inside here. That would have worked fine. But the reason why I'm not doing that is because if I make some changes to the original Word document, then I can run the pandoc command. This will update the body.txt file, and then I can compile this document again here. So I don't have to worry every time to just change this code and copy and paste it. If you want to find out more how the input command works, I have a video on that on YouTube too. So here we press play. As you can see, now we are building our project here at the bottom. We can see all the auxiliary file being generated and then we have the main.pdf the main.pdf is actually the output file so let's go and open this file here and as you can see there is a lot of red which we are going to have to fix so let me drag this main.pdf file here on the right side of the screen and we can start seeing all these issues that we are facing some issues are super simple to fix for instance like this my title here we can go into the body.txt file here actually let's open it on the left side and here let's keep the pdf so we can see that uh, all the changes that we are making uh, which are reflected in real time so here to remove the number that my title we can just put an asterisk here this is going to fix this problem so this uh, first uh, heading here is not longer being uh, a number so that solved that issue and we will see that uh, the document is going to be compiled uh, again automatically actually since we are getting an error with this table, I will show you later on how to fix it. But let me just uh, comment out this uh, table because it's actually causing some issues and uh, is uh, stopping our compiler and we're not uh, getting our document compiled properly. And let me also comment this image here. I'm doing that with the control forward slash. So this is how I'm commenting this line. And you can see all the red lines are those one which have issues. So now that I have actually commented out those lines, you can see that my document is compiling properly and we can close actually this message here.
So let me bring also the Word document back up. We can see that uh, so far is um, is doing a good job, Pando, because we have my title, Federico, my name, everything is fine. Then we have the introduction, all great. The background is great. And we have also the reference here. Keep in mind that this, unfortunately, is not really connected with your uh, reference. So if you change it, uh, this is going to mess up things. But you don't really care about because here we are just converting it uh, to LaTeX. Later on, of course, uh, you can fix that uh, and you can add a bibliography. At the moment, uh, unfortunately, Pandoc will not be able to handle all that. So if you're adding, for instance, citations uh, into your Word document with Mendeley like me, you can export uh, your uh, references uh, and then you can fix that manually. Uh, unfortunately, there are some draw drawbacks uh, and uh, the conversion from one format to the other is not 100% uh, straightforward. So you will have to fix something uh, like that. And if you want to find out uh, how to fix uh, your bibliography and how to add your bibliography to LaTeX, uh, just check my video. I will put a card here at the top. But everything seems to be fine. We have the bold text, we have the italic, uh, the underlined text. Everything is fine. The math equation also render very well, as you can see here. Then we have uh, the figure one. Everything is fine, figure one. But we can see that the figure is actually uh, in, uh, is not even appearing at the moment because we have uh, commented it out. So let's see what the issue with the figure here. So the issue with the figure here are two. The first issue is that uh, um, LaTeX, I don't know why, but Pandoc saying that uh, the images should be in a folder called media and this image should be called image1, not JPEG. But that's an easy fix, because we know that our image is in the same folder as the document, so we can just start typing mountain. And actually, um, VS Code is, um, is suggesting us to just use this file here, so we can just press Enter, and everything is fine. The second issue with this image, when it's going to appear, and I can just recompile the document, just check that if you get that message, you can just take off that window, you can see that the image now is too wide for uh, this type of document because, as you can see, a Word document is a little bit wider. We can fix that, and I've also added the code to fix that, so we can here uh, into the main.txt file, we can change actually the margin with the, the geometry package. So if you want, uh, you can increase the, or decrease actually in this case, the margin of the LaTeX file, and then the image is going to look fine. But still, it's not centered in to the document. So let me revert that back, but I just wanted to show you that you can change the geometry. Let me go into body.txt. Here, we have to do a couple of things. So we go here, back to the image. So the first thing that we're going to do in the width here, we're going to say width equal to text width. Okay, so this is going to fix the issue with the width of the image. And always, it's a good practice, also if you have checked my previous video on figures, is to wrap the include graphic inside a begin figure environment. So let me do that, begin, and then we're going to say figure. And then we just have to put the include graphic inside here. Why it is important to do so? Well, because then inside the begin figure environment, we can also set the centering. So this is going to centering. This is going to center our image, which we, that's what we want. And also, we can also add a caption, because our original figure in the document had a caption. So we can do so by saying caption, and then we can just say text, and then we say mountain. This is going to add a caption to the figure under the figure. Of course, now that we have fixed this, because there was a caption here, as you can see, figure one mountain, but it was just uh, um, understood by Pandoc as text. So we can fix that, we can actually remove this text here, and this is going to be much better. Now we have our figure. The only issue is that LaTeX, since we don't have a title in this document, we have a section, but not a title, is going to place the image here at the top, because we haven't specified where we want the image. So after the begin figure environment, and that's why it's also useful to have it, we can just put a square bracket and then say H. This is going to put the image more or less where we are actually adding it in the text. LaTeX will do all its calculation to find the optimal placement for the figure, but still is going to put the image more or less where we have put this, uh, this entry here in our document. So now it's looking much more similar to the Word document. There is only one last thing 
that we have to fix, which is this table, because the table is actually at the moment not rendering, while the list are rendering OK and the references are rendering fine. Well, let's fix the re references because the reference is an easy fix. We can actually just put here um, star here, an asterisk, sorry. Um, so we're going to remove this tree, this section number. So this, the, this, the asterisk is going to be removing the number section. And let's fix this table here. So we just have to uncomment everything. And unfortunately, you will just have to specify a small thing here. So you're going to have to specify manually the width of each of the cell of the table. Okay, so let me go to the readme here. And let me copy this code here. So I can go back here and I just have to specify inside here the width of each column. So everything has to be inside a curly braces. Here it is. So we should have fixed the error. So let's see, it's building. Let's see if the table is going to appear here. So don't worry if you still see a lot of red, because sometimes there is a bit of lag. It takes a bit of time for the software to recompile and check that everything is fine. And perfect. Here we can see the table. Another issue that we can see is that it is adding automatically this text, which is table one. So here inside the caption, we actually have to remove this table one. But aside of that, we are kind of uh, good to go. And uh, here we have the table, the original table, and here we have the new table. So they look very similar. Of course, if you want to remove the vertical line, it's super simple, and we can fix that by just uh, removing uh, this. Uh, uh, this um, symbol here at the top, and we can just put a space here. This should remove the vertical line. Let me check that everything is working. Perfect, it has worked. So now it looks uh, exactly like uh, the other table. Of course, here I've selected the two uh, sizes, but the one stops you to have uh, like a size of one colo column of five centimeter, while the other one uh, to be uh, like 2.8 centimeter. I mean, it's up to you. Uh, you can choose that. I really hope you find this uh, video informative and you have learned something new. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. Please consider supporting my channel. You can do so by just buying me a coffee. It's only a few dollars. Or you can support me on Patreon. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, just feel free to add them down in the comment section below. And um, see you in the next video.